particular church this pastor was from. I figured he would not be happy when Brother Larry got on the sinner's prayer, but he actually agreed with us. <laughs> Uh, with the we talk about the building, how we can meet out of the rain out of front of the church in the Philippines over there and just celebrate their it was my anniversary a couple a week or two ago. Well, they have a pretty nice building now, especially for Philippine standards. But I remember when they first started out, they just had this little cut of toilet yeah. water on it. They, they were still faithful to meet. Mm-hmm. And that, that the rain and weather often keeps us away. That's my sermon for a night. <laughs> Let's go to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, uh, this is, I guess, one of my favorite passages that talks about just the magnificence of God. Yeah. I hope I don't get too scientific with you, but I would like to just kind of point some stuff out from a physical aspect, how God is so much greater than sometimes we think Him to be. Isaiah chapter 40, we'll go ahead and read verses 12 through 14. It says, Who hath measured the water in the hollow of his hand, and made it out of heaven with a span, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains and scales and the hills and the mountains. Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor, hath taught him? With whom took he counsel, and who instructed him, and taught him in the paths of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and showed to him the way of understanding? Here, the Lord through the prophet Isaiah gives us a series of questions. And I don't think they're necessarily show that God has actually done these things, but it shows what man is enabled to do. Too bad. What God is capable of doing. So he begins really asking the, some questions regarding the creation. And he says, Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Yeah. The hollow of his hand, that's the palm of the hand. This is right. a handful. Man certainly has not. Amen. So I did some research on these things that are brought forth here. And according to scientists, there is approximately 366 quintillion gallons of water on Earth. Wow. And that goes million, billion, trillion, quadrillion, then quintillion is the next one. <laughs> And this God is just held just as in the palm of his hand. Amen. He says, Who hath measured the water in the hollow of his hand, and the meted out heaven with the span, or measured heaven with the span. The span is the distance from your thumb to your into your pinky from your stretched out hand. Uh, hmm. in ancient times it was approximately half a cubit. But for God, he says he's He's measured out heaven with just the span. Bad. Now, the scriptures, at least in the Hebrew, doesn't really specify a difference between the three heavens. It's all the same word primarily used in the scriptures, whether it's the first heaven, our atmosphere, the second heaven, what we call outer space, or the third heaven, the abode of God. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the abode of God is referred to as the highest heaven or the heaven of heavens. But if we just consider the universe, which I think is what is mentioned, what is talked about here, he's talking about creation. But the universe as a whole, he says he's he's measured it with a span. Amen. Well, again, I don't know how accurate scientists are. I mean, they do their best guesses, I guess. But they, according to them, the observable part of the universe, what they call it, what they can see and theorize about. They said it's estimated to be 93 billion light years in diameter. <laughs> That's there's 5.8 trillion miles in one light year, so mm. we're talking whole lots of miles, right? And yet God said He's He's measured expand. Just, from here to here, the heavens are to Him. Amen. 
you know, and all of that, then there's this tiny little rock called Earth, and here we are on it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But man really thinks he's something, doesn't he? <laughs> right. So, when you think of all the universe and all that is out there, if you will, just the chances that by accident, some flying rock would end up a certain distance from the sun to sustain life, and water would end up here, and, and all that we see around us would accidentally happen. <laughs> so, I took probability in college, and that's a pretty slim possibility of happening. Right. But man teaches that as fact today. You know, certainly God spoke and it happened. I can't explain all the physical uh, things about how creation happened. You know, I don't know if he used means or if it just all of it just appears. Mm -hmm. I know he spoke and it happened. There's really nothing more than we need. He goes on to say, he meted out heaven with a span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure. And that's he's, he contains it or he holds it in a measure, it's called. The dust of the earth, I believe that's speaking of the land of earth, you know, the actual dirt that we walk on. Amen. They say there's about 57 million square miles of land on Earth. Just for comparisons, Stewart County has 459 square miles. Mm. That's a whole lot of land on Earth. You bet. He says he's comprehended it in a measure. This word measure indicates that it's a third part of something. And coincidentally enough, their land covers about a third part of the Earth. Amen. I'm uh, sure God knew what he was doing. Amen. <clears throat> but someone suggested this implies that God can hold it between just his, well, these three fingers here, his thumb and first two fingers, that all the dust of the earth Amen. could be contained right there. So, really, when we think about the massiveness of God, we can say, just like David did in the Psalms, <laughs> I like stare the heavens, work with thy fingers, the moon, the stars, thou hast ordained what is man. Thou hast visited him, or the son of a man. Right. What is man? We are really nothing when we compare ourselves to God. Right. Both in a physical way and in a spiritual way. He goes on to say that he's way in the mountain. And scales and the hills and the balance. <clears throat> if you recall from last time I talked, I mentioned Isaac Newton, how he was lived just 500 years ago. Before him, ancient times, they didn't have the modern day idea of weight that we have. <clears throat> they didn't step on a scale and say, oh, I weigh 200 pounds. No, really, they, they measured. Basically, mass. How much right. Newton was a intellectually smart man. I don't know that he was ever born again or not. I don't think Einstein was by any means. Yeah, he's the one who came up with the the formula that we use to calculate forces and in particular weight. Mm -hmm. Just a little quick side note. If you want to lose weight real quick, just move to Mars, you'll lose 60% of your weight because there's not as much gravity there. There you go. Because <laughs> weight is based on gravity. You still have the same amount of mass, your clothes will still fit the same. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it says they, that he weighed the mountains and scales and hills in a balance. Amen. So they, they say Mount Everest by itself is just one of the bigger mountains, but not the biggest is estimated to weigh about 357 trillion pounds. So all the mountains in the world, God, just as you would weigh your fruit and vegetables at the grocery store, God's weighing them. Amen. Well, I think the point of this part and really the whole verse here is to point out how that God can just do things 
for the whole universe that man to do as common as, like I said, weighing your groceries at the store or mm -hmm. measuring something with the span. You know, carrying a bucket of water, you got to him, it's just a handful. Amen. All the waters of the earth. Really, when you consider how, I don't know, lack of a better term, massive God is, because he's far greater than even the universe which he created. Amen. So, and truly, we can say, what is man? Mm -hmm. How insignificant is man? Yet he was pleased to care for you and I, for one of you. Amen. Mm. And we'll go on and read the last two verses here. It says, Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord or being his counselor have taught him? So, has anyone directed the Holy Spirit? Mm. Was anyone there when he moved upon the face of the waters in Genesis 1? I think this is one problem with Armenian theology. They try to tell the Spirit where to go. There you go. But it's the spirit which directs man, not man which directs the spirit of God. Amen. So where was man? He was moving on the face of the waters. Man was not even around yet, was he? There you go. Was anyone directed the spirit of God? I say no. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, John 3 seems to indicate that the spirit of God is like the wind. He comes from where he wants, wants to and he goes to where he wants to and we have no control over it, do we? So, the Holy Spirit moves as he sees fit. So thanks be to God if he's moved on your life. Amen. But I can't say go over there, Brother Larry. Mm. It doesn't work that way. That's I've only been in Pentecostal service once or twice. They might have a spirit, but I don't think they have the Holy Spirit that they tell them to. Yeah. This is the spirit of the Lord. He is just as much sovereign as the rest of the Godhead. Amen. He had done whatsoever he had pleased. Who had directed the spirit of the Lord? So they were being his counselor had taught him. Mm. Has anyone been the advisor to God if you will? There you go. No, he doesn't have a, a cabinet like the president does. All these people advising him and telling him then what he ought to do. And when he was creating everything, he didn't consult with the scientists, did he? No, he <laughs> he didn't say, "Well, I think. he didn't call up Einstein and say, well, does it have to be this way, Mr. Einstein?" Mm -hmm. No, or Galileo, or all these other errors, thought all these. Famous scientists of the past. They think they really figured out something yet. God didn't need any instruction from them, did he? Amen. Right. I don't think man has figured out all the physical world. Mm -hmm. Amen. I don't know if he ever will. Nope. But yet, God knows it all and he created, didn't he? Amen. No one needed to teach him. No one needed to tell him that, yeah, you gotta have water for life to happen. And they had searching for water all over the place. Amen. They want to find water on Mars, they think there'll be life there. <laughs> well, I mentioned now that we sent that satellite around Pluto. I think they recently sent something to get up right around the sun. That God knows all about those things already. Amen. Yeah. Problem is, man tries to figure all this out his own wisdom. So the being his counselor have taught him. No one has taught God. Amen. And we didn't need advice from anyone. And he still doesn't today. He doesn't need the Larry to tell him who he needs to save. Right. He doesn't need us to think, tell him what we think he ought to do. He goes on to say in verse 14, with whom took he counsel and who instructed him? Right. He taught him in the paths, in the path of judgment, and taught him knowledge, <clears throat> and shewed to him the way of understanding. But who did God consult with? <laughs> no one, was it? Amen. We didn't 
get a group of the lesser gods and talk to them either. We have all our planets named after the, the Roman gods. All right. That's about all the glory they'll get is having the planet named after themselves. There you go. When God did not need to be instructed, he did not need to be taught how to do things. So who instructed him and taught him in the paths of judgment? That's justice or that which is right. That's someone taught God that which is right. Or you think by modern teaching that man knows what is right. But man's ideas are always changing. Amen. It almost gives me a headache to try to think, keep up with. Mm-hmm. You know, it used to be that you had to promote women's rights. Now you can be a woman if you want to. Or, All right. If, you know, God forbid, if Larry wanted to become a woman, he could just identify as a woman. But it's kind of gives you a headache trying to even figure out their line of thinking. Right. Man does not know what is right, yet he thinks he knows better than God. There you go. Who, with whom took the counsel, who instructed him, and taught him the paths of judgment? No one taught God what is justice or what is right. No God is the one who established that is, which is right. Says so who and taught him knowledge. Was there anyone that imparted knowledge to God? Is he not all knowing? Amen. Uh, well, in another scripture it says that he is declared from the ancient times things which are not yet. God already knew that Mr. Biden would be like if it didn't take him by surprise. Didn't it? Right. Amen. Whoever ends up in the White House next election will not surprise God. If America falls one day, will not surprise God. Amen. When Isaac Newton formulated his theory of gravity, God already knew about it, didn't he? Hey, man. God didn't say, oh, well, that's a good thought there, Isaac. No, <laughs> he already knew about that thousands of, really before even time existed. Hey, man. Well, I do think God set certain laws in motion that, that man is confined by, but certainly God is not. Hey, Amen. So how can the, a strong wind come and part the Red Sea and it'd be completely dry for the Israelites to walk across? Physically speaking, that's not a possibility. I mean, you might get a strong enough wind to kind of spread out a little bit enough to wade through, but you're not going to be running across there picking up dust. Amen. Amen. man has come up with lots of medical advances and yet only one can say you're healed amen and it's completely gone and god did not need to learn anything and the last part says it and showed to him the way of understanding and has anyone caused god to understand or to, to gain knowledge etc to gain intelligence, yeah. right? No, God said he didn't need understanding. He already understood it all. Amen. So I, an alternate theory to evolution is what they call intelligent design. And certainly it was intelligently designed, but it wasn't by some aliens or something. Amen. It was by the most intelligent one, the Lord Almighty. Amen. <clears throat> so when we consider all these questions that are proposed here, all the way from the physical to the intellectual, we see that God needs nothing from man. Amen. God is far greater than man. Yet man really thinks of himself to be something. Thinks he needs to help out God. Thinks he needs or knows better than God. And yet God is far greater than man could ever think himself to be. Amen. Let's read verse 18 and we'll close. It says, To whom then will ye liken God, or what likeness will ye compare unto him? There is no one or no thing that compare unto God. 
Well, I, I know many people know about God. I don't think many people know the biblical God. Amen. Many people have an idea of some old man up in the sky somewhere. <clears throat> Jehovah is far greater than that. Amen. So, if my closing question is, do you know him? Or do you know just about some God? A man of Amen. Amen. Close with that thought.